Carlson. He is the owner and operator of this lovely business here in Montague County. And we're going to talk to him about how he got into the dairy business and what all is part of his uh, daily routine. So, first question, why dairy? Well, I was, I was in the dairy business. We've been in farming. My dad is milling hay and beef cattle all the time. Then we went in the dairy business in 1989. I milked cows and old things for 20 years and went out in March of 2009. Was out for about a year and a half, didn't like it. Went back to Silver Buchanan down in the Diamond Bay in the Cater selling raw milk. So I went down there and talked to him, me and my daughters. I didn't do it. Never have regretted it. Like it. I like everybody coming in. I like selling straight to the public. I like producing a good product. And haven't had many complaints. You know. Now, what goes into producing a good product? Clean. Say? Clean. Clean. Yeah. We we are not organic on our milk. Uh, we just don't use. We mow our pastures, still spray it. I don't use nothing on the cows. Uh, no chemicals. Our fly spray. It's Dawn Dishworks and Detergent White Vinegar and Eucalypt and so on. Okay. Uh, we don't farm them. We don't do anything we don't have to. We just, I just, the milk is just clean. Uh, I don't, you know, if it's organic, I'd have to sell it for $10 a gallon. Sell it for five. And we're, we're inspected every month. And the regulations are pretty strict. And we have to have very clean milk. But that's, I'm okay with being inspected because it's going straight to little kids. Right. So that, that's a good deal. Uh, we also, we do the milk, we do cream when we have it, extra. Uh, we we're even keep the A2 milk with the more digestible milk and everything. We keep it on hand. Uh, we do uh, cheese, we make our own cheese. We have a cheese house where we store it, that's stored for two months before we're allowed to sell it. And I buy eggs or trade for eggs from lots of people. We feed them. The only way is that they feed a non-GMO feed and they turn their chickens out free range. Mm -hmm. And then we, and we make our elderberry syrup here. Uh, it's made over in my kitchen and uh, by a lady from McKinney. And uh, I have a young girl that makes yogurt. We make our own mozzarella cheese uh, for our pizza on Saturday night. Uh, we sell meat, we sell pork, meat, lamb, and we uh, uh, have our own bees. I do not take care of the bees. I have a Donnie John from Boyd, Texas, takes care of all the bees. We split the honey, so I sell a good bit of honey here. And uh, uh, we've got bees on the property here. You need bees. We do need bees. We need bees. Yeah. If we ever lose them, we're, we're, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. Uh, but that's about what we sell. Uh, we do a lot of chocolate milk for the little ones, and, and strawberry, and strawberry. And uh, we didn't sell duck eggs. Well, there so, you go. Yeah, yeah. So, and I can't. I don't do vegetables. That's the only thing I. Somebody will bring me locally grown vegetables that are chemical free. I'll resell. Okay. Yeah, we do that. That's all we do. Okay. Why don't you take us through the milking process of okay. getting it from? Well, we milk them twice a day. Uh, we don't milk them about 35 gallons right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, uh, we do nothing to the milk. It just comes in here and it stays in the tank behind us, 36 degrees. And I, I bottle every morning. Mm -hmm. And it, it stays in the coolers at 35 degrees. So we try to keep it, and when we get a hundred gallons a head that we're not using to sell, we make a batch of cheese. Okay. Francis Hamry from, from uh, the uh, other side of Petrolia, uh, who makes our cheese for us. We make cheddar, farmers, gouda, bavarte, and pepper jack. So uh, it has, like I said, it has to be stored for two months before we're allowed to sell it. Sell the cheese ten dollars a pound, and we don't put no preservatives, no nothing in it. And then 
we sell the way which is a raw product to the people. So, uh, which is very nasty, <laughs> but very healthy. So, uh, I can think we, uh, uh, we do the, the, the milk, you know, I guarantee it for two weeks. You know, anything goes wrong, I don't want the milk back. Just come back and get you another gallon. You know, it will stay if your refrigerator is good and cold. It should last for about three weeks. Okay. Yeah. But I guarantee you. Know, so uh, that's I have. I sell most of my milk to the co-op. Uh, uh, ladies will come and they pick up like a water cola lady picking up 35 gallons. For several families, and that's how we sell it. And, uh, but our cows are out on grass. They, uh, I feed very little grain. I get my grain from only feed, feed and hunter. We feed a non GMO, no corn, no soy, milo, peanut milk, and uh, we're against genetically modified stuff. So, so uh, they get about seven pounds of milk. Okay. And the purpose, the reason why I give them. A small amount, is, you got to give them something to get them in. And then a small amount, that way when they leave the dairy barn, they will go in grains. And that's where you will grass that milk. Because if I feed them too much grain, they won't graze. We won't have about an inch of grain on top of the gallon of milk. If I let them leave here a little hungry, go out and eat the green grass, then we'll have two and a half to three inches of grain. That's what everybody wants. There we go. So we don't touch the milk. I mean, we take nothing off. If we do separate cream, the, I sell a few gallons of skin, but then I, the hogs get the skin. So that's the way we do it. So your whole process feeds your yeah. feed right into your yeah. whole farm. Yeah. The hog, the hogs, the pork meat, if we raise our own hogs, uh, they get like the skin, they get the way any bad milk, that's like a fresh cow, you have to have some milk when you burn the cat. They get that, they get the cheese trimming, so, and a little bit of meat. So okay. that's, that's our pork meat we're doing. Well, do you mind giving us a bit of a tour? Oh, okay. Cheddar Farmers and Novartis. What is Novartis? What is uh, I actually don't know. I just milder cheese. We use it in the uh, 
A lot of people cooking like Mexican dishes or something like that using it. This is the whole milk. One gallon, five dollars. There's the, there's the cream line, if you can see it. And then this is the A2 milk. It's more digestible. Okay. That's the only difference in it. It's from different cows. We have to have it tested. And lots of little kids are lactose. Right. And our milk is not pasteurized, but some of them can't have it, so we have to do the A2 milk. Cream. Which is almost on a cake. Yeah. Yeah, there was 14 quarts in there this morning. We do eggs, we buy eggs, trade for eggs from local people, and we do that. And there's the cheese. And then we'll, uh, what you've got the milk made. And this is, so in here, I'll show you here, here's where we milk the cow. We milk six cows at a time. We got some of them out there waiting to be milked. This is our cheese now. We've got lots of eggs in here. I see that too. Yep. Good place to keep them yep. right now. The cheese house stays 42 degrees, so it's a good place to store it. We have to store the cheese for two months, like I said, before we're allowed to sell it. This is how we make it. This is Gouda. Uh, this is Gouda. This is this is the pepper now. Uh, this is our newest cheese. We just made it. And then we have the barber. The barber is in the cheddar. And the cheese wheels have to be turned every so often. Leave them whole, we can cut them up and then vacuum seal them, put them in packs, then vacuum seal them, and then we, now that, uh, you want to leave the cheddar, the longer it stays in the wheel, it hates. If you cut it up and vacuum seal it, you're sharpening the ends right there. It doesn't get any sharpening. They all change flavor in the wheel over a period of time. The cheddar gets sharper. Your good it takes about eight, nine months before it's fit to eat. Or, or worse to eat. I don't know how you say it. It's not very good in no time in my opinion, but anyway, it, and a lot of people like to do this mess of the smoke too. And uh, we, uh, my youngest daughter makes some of the cheese when she has time. And then we make mozzarella for our pizza, but it's made another process over in the kitchen. It can be done. It has to be heated. It's been so fresh. Mm -hmm. This here cannot be so much. You want to keep the cheddar as long as you can, but the longer you keep it, the sharper it gets. And your farmer, sometimes it changes over a period of time to parmesan. It tastes like parmesan. I don't get it changes to parmesan, but it tastes like parmesan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just changes flavors. And, uh, the Havarte is uh, it's better the fresher you eat. In two months, you need to start using it. Uh, and that's what we, when the girls make the homemade tamales, cheese, and other meat and tamales, they use the Havarte. Good for the immune system. You know, it's good for a cold, and some people say you take it a little bit every day. Mm -hmm. You, that's okay, but just take it mainly when you need it. Like anything we do, only take it when you need it. <laughs> you know, I, that's, uh, then we make yogurt, and have the young ladies make pickles. I also have blueberries down there that uh, I buy stuff from people that use no chemicals. Yeah. And these blueberries are raised over here in New York. New York. New York. New York. New York. New York. And the honey. Uh, I've, I've learned so much about all this. You, 
the, the milk is just what the cows are eating. Honey, same way. Mm -hmm. Whatever the bees are. And it changes. We had some that was, uh, I had sorghum planted in the bottom in the summer. The honey was as dark as it could be and tasted like sorghum. But this is okay. just, you know. This is more clover. Yeah, yeah. Right now we're getting a, you're getting a good bit of honey right now because we've had a good spring. Good spring. Lots of moisture. Spring. Yeah, lots of moisture. And uh, so that, uh, the honey, uh, we got a compliment. One lady told me that she tried honey everywhere and ours was the best. Well, that's said, a nice well, compliment. Don't, don't tell me, tell Donnie and the bees. They're the ones that does it. They make it and he takes care of it. So, but uh, uh, we're even trying to sell peanut butter. Are you? I've got uh, uh, the Amish, where I get a lot of my eggs and the chickens. Mm -hmm. They uh, are growing their own peanuts and they make their own peanut butter. So we're supposed to have peanut butter mm -hmm. in a little bottle. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm not a big fan of peanut butter, but a lot of people. Are. And we're here in your kitchen. Yeah. Where you we do store the meat. Store the meat and do uh, your Saturday night pizza. Pizza. Yeah. We sell hamburger meat and lots of hamburger meat. And, uh, we do. We have beef, pork, lamb. We raise. I do not raise the lamb. I buy them from two or three local people that's grass fed. But I raise my own beef and do my own raise my own pork. So and then we do the pizza on Saturday night. We try to use all of our own stuff. We make our own crust, our own pizza sauce. Uh, use all of our meat much as we can you, you know I like to use local stuff and uh, we can even do the pizza gluten free if we have to and uh, we try to keep it as healthy and cheap as we can. <laughs> well you have a very nice setup here. Um, do you have any way people can contact you? Facebook page or uh, well, website? Yeah, we have a website. We have a, a we're on Facebook. Yeah. And uh, the only way they can contact me is my cell phone because I don't do Facebook. Uh, 940 is the only way they can contact me. And uh, I'm not very technical. And my daughter takes care of the all the computer stuff and all the Facebook. But uh, they can come here. Best way is I tell everybody before you drink the milk at any dairy, anything, go visit the dairy. Go look around. If you don't like what you see, leave. Don't get that. But, but I welcome everybody to come here and we'll give them a tour, let them taste the milk, eat the cheese. That's the best part. Mm -hmm. Come watch us milk cows anytime they want. We're always, you know, have little kids who want to come and they need to see where the food comes from. Yeah, that's great. So that's all I know. That we, just, we try to do the best we can, the cleanest we can, the healthiest. So, and I think that's what we. That's one thing that's wrong. With us. We're not eating healthy enough. We need to. And we're not working hard. <laughs> we need to work know more. where our food comes yeah. from. Yeah. Yeah. Be, yeah. be ready to. Yeah. The, you, you just need to focus on our health and our well-being. Yeah. As much as we can. Yeah. That's what. A lot of things we eat not good enough. We need to be cooking more at home. This 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 thing this virus here may have woke us up a little bit for home cooking. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And so that that might be good. Which I I'm not very good at home cooking. Well, we appreciate your time and the little tour you've given us of right. your dairy, and we'll send people your way. Okay, everybody's welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank y'all.